Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to go through a quick little debugging process on an interesting that issue that I found. Uh, I was scrolling through the um, black issue tracker and I saw this title of this issue and I was like, huh, that sounds really interesting. Let's see if we can figure out what's wrong. Unrelated test cases fail and the total number of tests increased beyond 367. Okay, cool. So they actually did a really good job of giving a reproduction here. The command to run, the tests to add, which file to add them in. Um, so let's clone black and try and reproduce this again. Uh, you'll notice that the issue is already fixed because I already did this in the past, but I'm going to show you the process that I went through to figure out what was wrong. Uh, we need to check out a particular commit probably. Yeah, we can get it out of this. The G stands for git. So if we git check out this, uh, we're gonna set up a virtual env using talks because that's what Black uses. Uh, and they were adding some tests to a particular test file. And we just copy paste those and do the same as what they did. Uh, test, test black.py. Throw them right at the end here. Cool. Uh, and they used, uh, oh, they ran the test with talks, but we're just gonna run them with pytest directly. Get our virtual env test test dash n4. Ooh, discovery error. Oh, no module named black. They probably installed dot. Oh, and I think black has another dependency if we install the black d. So we got to do that as well with, with the d. And then they were able to reproduce these test failures uh, with four processes. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. So we do pytest tests dash n4. N4 means that pytest x dist is going to use four workers, and so it's going to split the test in a particular way. Uh, this was important in their reproduction because, uh, spoilers, some tests cause some other tests to fail, but only if they were in a particular worker configuration. So if we do this, uh, it'll run it, and you see that we get some test failures here. I'm actually going to cancel this because uh, despite Black not having very many tests, it still takes a while for this to finish. Uh, and it's not super helpful to run this to see the whole thing. Although we do get our test failure here, which is useful. Cool. So <clears throat> whenever I see something like this, adding tests, causing other tests to fail, my gut instinct is to look for test pollution. Um, and I've done several videos on that. I'll try and remember to link them in the description. I've even written a tool that makes it easy to find this. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I found the test pollution here. Uh, so the first thing that I wanted to do is figure out what set of tests were causing this. Uh, and fortunately, Xdis can actually give us the answer to that as long as we use dash V here to get the test names out. Um, so I'm actually going to... See, Python dash um uh, u for unbuffered output, uh, and we're going to put this into a log file so that we can watch it while it runs. So yeah, we get all the test names here. We get the passed and failed, uh, and a bunch of output here. And we can probably cancel it by now because I think the failure has already happened. Uh, grep fail log. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we can see that the failed tests happened on worker GW, GW0. Uh, that's what it labels the workers. Uh, you can see this test passed on GW1, this one passed on GW2, et cetera, et cetera. So if we grep for GW0 in our log, uh, we can kind of get a list of all the tests that passed and failed on that worker. Uh, now, there's a bunch of other garbly gook here, so we actually want to grep out everything that's... Um, that's just our test IDs here. So I'm gonna do grep-e, and there's probably better ways to do this. Past failed dot star dollar sign. That will, oh, we're gonna do EO. Uh, capital E is so that I can use extended regexes. O is so that it only shows the matched stuff, uh, but we don't want this part at the beginning. So we're gonna do cut-d on space and F2 uh, to get us everything else. So this is our list of tests, and we can put that into a test list file. Now, we wanted to see which one was failing, so let's see, grep fail, frail, <laughs> grep fail in log. Uh, and so this is the first test that fails. So we can actually just stop our test list at that. So let's look for that. Um, and I'm actually gonna grab the test below it too, because uh, actually, let's just get the one. Uh, it's this test here. Uh, actually, hard to tell. <laughs> uh, and exclude. So let's put a 
space dollar sign here. Okay, so this is actually the test that was failing. So let's put that as our last test, get rid of everything below it because we don't really care about those tests there. Uh, and now we're going to use detect test pollution to try and figure out the problem here. So if we do pip install detect test pollution, this is a tool that I wrote. Uh, it should hopefully help us find the pair of tests that caused this particular failure. And if we do detect test pollution and help, uh, we're going to be using the test IDs file. That's what that file that we set up there is. Uh, although um, we have to actually get rid of the white space on the end. I forgot to do that. <laughs> so we're going to replace space dollar sign with nothing and get rid of that everywhere. Cool. All right. So we're going to do detect test pollution. It also has like a fuzzing mode. Uh, if you didn't want to figure out the test list like that, you probably could have figured it out by just telling it to repeatedly shuffle tests until it found the particular problem, um, but we know the we know the test IDs and we know the failing tests, so it's pretty easy for us to just do that. Test IDs file, test list, and failing test is the last test in that, tail dash one test list, uh, and then we can just let it chug. It's going to basically, you know, try and make sure the test passes on its own, make sure it fails with the full set of tests. And then it's going to bisect down the tests until it figures out what are the two tests that caused this failure. Uh, and it actually, you know, it's pretty quick here because we only had 28 tests to bisect through. Um, it's even pretty fast with thousands of tests, although the first couple of iterations will take a while. But bisection is fast, so that's pretty cool. Um, and it spits out that we found the failing test. So if we run just PyTest with these two tests, uh, tail dash one test list. Uh, you'll see that we get a failure here, and it's actually the same exact failure that we saw before, uh, which was probably hidden due to the way tests were ordered on the main branch. And uh, I actually, you know, did the same thing here uh, because I was bored and threw together the same list of things, found the failing tests, uh, and found the pair of tests that failed in order. Um, now, I guess I already spoiled the answer here, what the problem is. Uh, my guess at the problem here was probably some global cache that was not being reset between two tests. And sure enough, if I commented out this particular test or this particular LU cache, LRU cache, uh, oh, there's a lot of them. What file was that one in? Test uh, source black files, LRU cache. Uh, LRU cache being, I don't think it's that one, it's probably this one. Uh, LRU, LRU cache being a way to sort of cache repeated results of things. And in this particular case, it's caching the result of a symlink result. Uh, and sure enough, you know, if we comment that out, you can see the tests are now passing again. So that's one cause of the problem here. Now, the actual cause of this problem is the way that those tests were written. Uh, and they ended up fixing it, uh, spoilers, by removing the mocks from the tests. Uh, there's actually kind of two things to learn here from this, which I think is really important. Uh, mocking the file system is really, really difficult and really easy to create bugs, uh, like this bug here. Here they were trying to mock out a bunch of pathlib methods to try and fake a file system. It's really, really easy to set up a file system in a temporary directory. Oh, I guess they this is their temporary directory. It's really easy to set up tests in a temporary directory and not have to deal with, yeah, here we go, temporary directory, and not have to deal with trying to fake a file system, because it's really hard to fake a file system properly. Uh, but it's really easy to set up a, a temporary directory. Now, it's going to be a little bit slower because you have to write files to disk, but you know, in the, in the context of running a Python test, it's, it's not even a noticeable amount of time. Uh, and you'll get much, much more reliable tests and uh, much less likely to cause issues like this. The other learning here is to be careful when you're caching stuff. Uh, you know, a global cache of a symlink resolve is probably fine if it's scoped in a particular way, but you know who knows what other process changes the symlink to be something else or deletes the file or you know, replaces it with something else, which is actually the problem here. Uh, and so you know, be careful with global caches like this, especially one that is unbounded and doesn't uh, doesn't ever clear itself here. This is an uh, LRU cache with you know, infinite size. So potentially also a memory leak. Um, but yeah, just be careful with what you're caching, uh, especially paths. There's probably other bugs lingering here with actual execution at runtime, where like if this if this file changed, uh, suddenly black's gonna refer to other stuff. There's actually a whole class of security bugs where things like this happen, where um, a process will read the value of a symlink 
and then keep that uh, red path later on, and then you know the symlink gets swapped out and uh, writes to a file that it doesn't expect to write to. But anyway, I thought I would show you this as well as um, another usage of detect test pollution. I really love this tool, and I really love showing it off uh, and you know fixing the bug. Well, this isn't a fix, but their actual fix was was the better one. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.